Hi, I am Valder Beebe. I am the host and the visionary of That Celebrity Interview. Good morning, Forrest Galante. Welcome to the Belder BB Show. Uh, thank you, Valder. Thank you so much for having me. I want my audience to know, you know, in an era where species are in danger of uh, extinction, and I can't believe that the White House is gathering scientists to determine if we're causing global warming, which can be a part of the extinction process, but they are. This expedition that I get to talk to Forrest about is organized by Animal Planet in coordination with biologists and Extinct or Alive. He's the Extinct or Alive host, as well as the Galapagos National Park Ranger and a Galapagos, he's with the National, I'm sorry, Galapagos Conservatory. That's a mouthful. <laughs> Forrest, I'm so excited to talk with you because there's so many contradictions to talk about your topic. Tell me about Extinct or Alive. Sure. So... Big picture, Extinct or Alive is a show that I host on Animal Planet, and what it does is it documents in real fashion exactly what I do, which is the search for animals that I believe have been wrongfully deemed extinct. As soon as an animal is declared extinct, all funding dries up, all hope is lost for the species. Extinct means gone forever. I, however, hold out hope that for some of these species, they're not gone. They're hiding in some small pocket, and if I can uncover them, uh, I can secure funding to preserve and protect them. So I go on these expeditions that are considered impossible to look for these animals that have been wrongfully deemed extinct. Once you find them, does that start a revival process? Certainly. And, and let's be clear, once I find them, is it's a one in a billion shot. And it has happened more than some may believe. Um, but once we find them, what that does do, uh, like in this case with the tortoise, is it secures a lot of funding that goes towards the conservation and the ongoing existence of the species. So whether that's breeding programs or uh, conserving habitat or whatever the process is that the local area or government deems necessary to conserve the species, the funding is then secured to put that into place. You had a big finding in February of this year, the Fernandin Torter. Tell us about that. Yeah, so just last week, um, for the first time in 113 years, I found the Fernandina Island tortoise. Now, this is a tortoise in the Galapagos on an active volcano, an animal, it's only the second one that's ever in history been found, an animal that was deemed extinct over 100 years ago. And after months of planning, preparation, permitting, myself as a representative of Animal Planet and in collaboration with the Galapagos National Parks and the Galapagos Conservancy, as you mentioned, went on this hellish expedition to Fernandina Island to look for the Fernandina Island tortoise and of course we managed to find one. So this find, uh, that, does that make you go down in history? Um, it, it does but it's not about me. It's much more importantly it makes the species go down in history. We have essentially rewritten natural history and that's what's important. It's a message of hope. It's an animal that was given up on, pushed aside, forgotten forever, is still there, clinging on by a thread. We found her, we've moved her into a facility where she's eating, she has water, she's gaining weight because she was very, very underweight, and it's a big picture message, which is the hope to never give up on wildlife. So making this big fine and making it on camera, sometimes you don't make a fine, or most times you don't make a fine. What becomes the, the, the payoff? for not making a find. Well, look, it's, it's, it's not about whether you find it or don't find it. I mean, obviously, finding it is important. And, and let's be clear, I'm not the say-all, end-all of whether or not the animal's there. Just because I go on an expedition for two or three weeks, whether I find it or don't doesn't mean the animal is definitively there or definitively gone. Uh, well, I suppose if I find it, it is definitively there. But if, if I don't find it, it doesn't mean it's definitively gone. But the payoff is the fact that people who are tuning in, who are watching Extinct or Alive, 
are learning about wildlife. They're learning about the environment in which that animal lives or used to live, and they're caring about a species that has been forgotten by the rest of the world. So as you make these uh, uh, great tricks, where are some of the places that we get to see as the audience? My goodness, that is an extensive list. Um, from the Arctic to the North Atlantic to the Amazon jungle, Southern Africa, Madagascar, Southeast Asia, deep into caves, up on glaciers, through deserts. This last one was on a volcano. I mean, what's crazy about animals deemed extinct is they're usually gone from habitats that are extremely difficult to get to, extremely um, harsh, and climates that are very, very challenging. So. I've been very fortunate in the sense that I get to go to all of these different places and use a variety of techniques and my skill set to search for these animals. What is the best part about your job before I let you go? There's no bad part about my job, everything. But the best part about my job is going to these places that other people don't get to go and seeing the environment and interacting with the wildlife that is still there. Obviously, finding an animal such as this tortoise is the, the coup de grace, it's the best there is. But all of the stops along the way, all of the other creatures that do still exist within the habitat, getting to see them, enjoy them, and communicate what, how incredible those animals are with the world that's watching my show, that is the best part of my job. So when do you want us to watch you on Animal Planet, Extinct or Alive? Yep. Uh, so this summer, Season 2 of Extinct or Alive comes out on Animal Planet. Uh, it will have this expedition where I found the tortoise, as well as some other huge scientific news, another expedition that rewrites natural history as we know it, and um, I think everybody will really enjoy it. Well, there only ta it only takes one person to start a movement, and I hope you're the big part of that movement. Thanks Thank for you. being my guest on the Velder BB Show. Thank you. Hi, I'm Valder BB. I host the Valder BB Show, broadcast on radio and television. And this is my phone pouch. My phone pouch is a great invention. It allows me to go hands-free, pocket-free, purse-free, even belt-free. Head on over to myphonepouch.com. <laughs>